I'm so bad at saving to broke for rental This cost of living is driving me mental Wanna move out, get away from parentals Don't forget to invest, I'm feeling stressed Cause what if I can't retire? I'll probably just expire Can someone give me an answer? Keep it simple Keep it simple, keep it simple. This is a continuation of episode one. In the last episode, we talked to Pretty about her origins as a content creator and how she rose to stardom as an influencer. And we left off with a super saucy question. Would she date the perfect man with the perfect horoscope, bearded, manly, but who loves to gamble? No, I would never. You would give up the beer. I would give up everything. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, cannot, cannot. I've been scared eh. Like <laughs> I lived my whole childhood is literally okay, like okay. like you see you see what gambling us to my, my yeah. family. It tore it apart. Yeah. True, apart. True, true, so true, so true. for me it's like that's too hits way too close to home. Uh. For me it's like it's okay to like not really like be in charge of your finances and still and you're still figuring things out like I get it because nobody goes into this like knowing exactly what to do unless you're a financial consultant oh, wow. <laughs> you know so, so it's like, you know, like I get it like if I do meet like someone and if they like don't have their finances sorted or like really like are very far from like even getting insurance or even thinking about saving and things like that like I, it wouldn't be something that like puts me off you know I'll be something that it, it's definitely something that should be a conversation lah mm. you know if you are the perfect person and the perfect horoscope <laughs> and you sound as perfect as Pris described you to be That's then right. I think um, for sure I would date you so hit me up but <laughs> <laughs> kidding but you, you know but that. I think for me it's really like obviously it's a conversation to have like if yeah. you're gonna get a relationship with someone of course there's something you must talk about maybe not at the start when you're dating but eventually like if you're talking about your future mm. this has to be brought up it can't be something that like you keep leaving to like oh we figure it out eventually because <laughs> it's too much yeah, yeah. that's true um, do you feel like because when you grow up in this kind of environment where you're so con- like so aware of your own finances mm. do you think that uh, you would be more open about your finances to your, like your future partner mm. um, like, I think Okay, so I the thing is I've never been in a relationship, so I really don't know how it's like. I really don't mm. know like when people have these conversations or like mm. when they like how oh, how much they share. You know, like how right, much how right. much you like when do you talk about like having a joint account? You know, when do you right. like when oh. you get married? Yeah. So so to me it's like I don't know when's the right time for these things and conversations, but I definitely feel like I'll be open about my finances if I trust the person enough mm. or I just if I love them enough like, and if I know yeah. that I'm gonna spend my future with them or at least a very long time with them and we figure things out then I'm definitely like open because like what's the point of hiding you know if, if I want you in my life like this and if I let you in uh, every other aspect of my life then when it comes to money I'm like no 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 <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't ask yeah, me how much I earn oh, yeah man. yeah so I think for me it's really it's a matter of trust it goes back to all the the basic things you must have in a relationship first before you talk about money lah like. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's so true, right? But I, okay, personally, I will say that there is no right time mm. to talk about money. There is no like perfect time. Oh, oh, he kissed me three times. So <laughs> oh my god, now gotta, it's time. Gotta keep that. Gotta update that spreadsheet. <laughs> be like, it's time. It's a book eh, that tells you. Okay, after the third kiss, you tell him how much money you're back. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> then, then after after he hugged you five times, then you like, okay, then you then you tell him your your salary. You should, you should also <laughs> um, give him my pin number lah. Yeah, la, yeah. <laughs> Measure um the amount of time he spends gazing at you. If oh, it's yeah. past like thirty five seconds, then yeah, it's time. And then if his pupils <laughs> dilate, that's when you know. <laughs> that's when you know wow, yeah. I wish it was dead if like, only la, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, like you said, it mm. all comes down to trust, right? Yeah. There's people yeah. who I trust like what two days after I meet them. Mm. But there's people who I don't even trust like ten years after I yeah. know them. So yeah, it's yeah. all about trust. Yeah. yeah. It's been so forty five minutes. Do you trust me? <laughs> I'm kidding. I trust you <laughs> wait, wait, implicitly. Let me see. I feel people like are dilating. dilating. <laughs> <laughs> that it's trust. Oh no, it's real trust. Trust. text me her pin number. <laughs> I'm oh dear God! Tell her everything, <laughs> guys. Guys, take it offline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but seriously though, like men who are listening to this episode, do you not want a financially self-aware and financially woke queen? <laughs> oh my God! Like, this is a matchmaking episode. I, love I swear it. to God, yeah. surprise! This is the whole point. <laughs> yeah, That's why I looked at my podcast plan. I was like, I want Pretty on my show so that I can help her find a boyfriend. Wow, thank no, you. We, eh. we, we, <laughs> We, we took your podcast seriously We cancelled our agenda And then there's yeah. our agenda wow. for today Yeah, we yes. heard it I was like, fuck it We gotta find her, man 
appreciate it so much. And then I was like, okay, I'll, I'll listen to a podcast episode and then like, I'll write down the, the requirements. <laughs> requirements. Yeah, we're here to help. Yes, yes, not just the financial literacy side. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So, so what is the horoscope that you're looking for? Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm a Virgo. Ooh, so okay. I, I'm very like, okay, like, the thing is, I, I'm quite like, when it comes to horoscopes, I so am a bit like, take you a pinch of salt. Yeah. Like realistically, I know that Same. it's very self-fulfilling. Like mm. if I read something, I'm going to make sure this happens. Like if I read that something bad's gonna happen to me this month, I'm gonna like anything can happen. I'll be like, that's the thing, lor. <laughs> yeah, that was it, lor. Like I she knew was it. right. <laughs> exactly. So it's very self fulfilling. Like if if my day was gonna be great, it will suddenly be bad because the the horoscope says it's gonna be bad. Yeah. So I I make sure to take everything a pinch of salt. And of course, when it comes to dating, I. I definitely when I date someone long enough, I will go. I will go see like, okay, are we supposed to like? Is this is this supposed to feel this way? <laughs> is it supposed to be right? <laughs> yeah, so I would definitely go and read. But then I know sometimes it's bad because when I read, then I'll be like looking out for all these red flags that the horoscope yeah. tells me to look out for. Yeah. But so far everything has been right. Like I've dated a Sagittarius guy, it did not work out. Mm. It was really bad, and everything, every every website was was right about it, lah. Yeah. Wow. So so to me, it's like I don't know. For me, it's very. Uh, I base it off my friends, I guess, because my horoscope is very like. If I mean when it comes to like relationships or friendships or anything like that, it's you just get along with a certain group of people who happen to just fall under like the same things. Like, I get along so well with Capricorns, Cancers, like and my apparently my best compatibility is with Scorpios, but I'm very what? scared of Scorpios. <laughs> I swear to god, Scorpios are like terrifying. Correct. Yeah, I've, Scorpios I've, are I'm sorry, but they're bad shit crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm yeah. I'm very scared of Scorpios, but yeah. that's my highest compatibility <laughs> for everything. Like Jesus. intellect, then intimacy, everything. Maybe I'm like, maybe, maybe you're intimidated by the compatibility. Maybe oh, but you're, you're, you're scared I don't they want. go too well. I, I, it's too much. I don't want, I don't want. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay, wait. But but asking for a friend, but okay. how do you feel about Gemini's? Um, wow, I don't, I don't have a lot of Gemini friends, so I can't base it off. Like, there's no one to base it off in my life. Hey, can I be your first Gemini friend? But, but you see, I just met you, so oh, so far Gemini is great. You know, forty five minutes. <laughs> I, I feel like never dilate. <laughs> Let's move on <laughs> to the to the actual <laughs> questions <laughs> that y'all plan. Right? We're talking about yeah. horoscope yeah. signs, and now we're back to the dollar sign. That's right. Oh, oh nice. Thank wow. you. On fire. <laughs> God. I guess let's move on to the. Do you have any other? Any other surprise questions? No. Okay, no, just, okay. Just Sagittarius people are. Okay, the best. we gotta drop it. We gotta move on. Pris- yeah, Priscilla, Pris- Priscilla, Priscilla wow, we're pulling out the full wow. name Priscilla. We have to stop it now. Control yourself. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Sophia. No. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 This is like an act of intimacy to me, you know. <laughs> okay. So we asked you some questions on our Insta story and you all sent in some really good questions, I think. But sorry to say, I still had the best question. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you kind of crushed it. From oh, the so, uh, there, so much <laughs> ego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, um, let's get into the questions then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the first question comes from Cheese Grater Ooh. with two eyes. So the question is, I imagine an influencer's income to be irregular. If mm. so, how do you manage your money? Ooh, that's a good question. Cause right. I think especially this year after the global pandemic hit, I think a lot of brands had to figure out how to like how to work with people again or like how to continue marketing their products and you know like read the room and like kind of figure out their marketing plans all over again. So of course like I guess in the influencer scene it, it meant like uh, not a lot of regular gigs because a lot of clients had to figure out how to work from home and all these things. So for the month where like circuit breaker hit and stuff like that, of course it was very quiet. Like w- in terms of gigs, like I was still creating content, I was still making videos, but it was just quiet in a sense where like my my email wasn't like ringing as much. You know, my inbox wasn't as full as like usual. So I was just like a bit worried because that's when I'm like, oh no, like what does this mean? I don't know how long like people are going to take to reach out again or people are going to like feel comfortable enough to like okay let's go for a shoot and I don't know when all these permits will be up and available for people to like ha- have shoots again so it was just a, a weird like period for me but I think uh, how I manage my finances I guess is that um, I've always been somebody that saves a lot so I'm, I wasn't it definitely didn't worry me to the point where I'm like oh no like what do I need what, what can I do to earn money this month now because I, I need money ASAP so it wasn't like that for sure like I definitely had savings I could live off or if if there was a huge need a need for me to like spend on something for my family or something urgent like I definitely could still afford it with savings 
So it wasn't, it's irregular in general, but I think like when you constantly save, you know, of course it takes a, a lot of pressure off. Like, you don't have to, when things like this hit that are so crazy, unpredictable, you obviously can fall back on savings. So yeah, it's irregular. It was very scary when COVID hit, but now I think it's going back to normal a bit because a lot of like companies, clients, they all have permits to shoot. Shoots are happening like every other day. So, you know, I'm, I'm back to like, shooting regularly oh, and like actually working on client projects and stuff so it's getting better for sure yeah. nice mm. that's good to hear so i suppose you can say that savings allows you the freedom to uh tight through tight you through like tough times like for example um like the like you know influencers they have the danger of like getting cancelled i suppose like you know cancel culture is so rampant um yeah so would that be something that you take into account, like how much you need to save, how much like minimum do you need in your emergency funds and things like that? Um, I definitely don't like, I definitely don't know like what's a good amount to have or I don't know what's a minimum, but I guess, I mean life has been very predictable. <laughs> Just in the, this year alone has been like really scary, like even with like things at home and family of course. So like the, the expenditure for like all these very unpredictable, unexpected things have been like quite crazy at home. But of course, I think uh, yeah, so I don't know what's a good amount to have in your bank account, but I think like, luckily for me, I'm always someone who saves. Like any project that comes in, I never think about like, how should I spend this money? Or like, how should I treat myself here? Unless there's an occasion. Unless there's like a, okay, it's my best friend's birthday. I know I'm going to do something here. Uh, I know I'm going to set aside this much to like get their gift or whatever. So I guess for me, it's only when it comes to things like that, then in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm definitely going to spend this. I'm mm. definitely going to put this aside now. And I'm going to like, if I know this from a, in advance, I'm just going to put this aside at, like, mm. from the start, la, so I don't have to like worry about it. Yeah, so I think, like, of course, being an influencer and like you mentioned cancel culture and stuff, it goes back to the unpredictability of the job and yeah. how literally tomorrow somebody could just like spread some rumor or like fake mm, news yeah. and then I would just lose all my jobs on the spot because, like, just because brands are just afraid to be associated with something like that. So it's very, very risky and I think there's no way reassuring things like that or like, or, like just reassuring even clients. But I think for me, it's it's the working relationship la. Like if I if I work so well with someone Or if I work this closely with a client And I'm, I'm just very upfront and honest About how we work together I think that that like gives me some form of like Not leverage But like I guess an advantage there Because you know They can hear my word for it Or take my word for it You know they, they can ask me directly They feel comfortable enough To talk to me about it Instead of believing something online So even, even like last year With the whole brown face thing of course mm. I did have a lot of clients Get very scared in the moment And they dropped me From a couple of gigs And it was understandable Because those gigs Were national day gigs And they were gigs Where right. like You wanted me to be On the streets of Orchard Road <laughs> Giving out ice cream And yeah, I was yeah. on the news Every day And newspapers yeah. Channel 5 I was everywhere And I get that that's too risky because I'm literally physically going to be there doing something and anything can happen. Yeah. Like there are a lot of people who don't even know the full story and are just yeah. going to be like, oh, the race is gone, the news, and then <laughs> they could do anything. And, you know, it, it, will, it will affect the brand, of course. So, so for me, I was, I was also very understanding. I was like, okay, like, I get it. You know, if it's something that risky, you, it's my face and your brand, you're putting it out on the streets of Orchard Row, like that's a lot. But for other gigs, like when it came to like skincare brands and stuff, I was like, why you gotta drop me when I'm still I still use this product I still promote it, it didn't change yeah. after after this brown face rap video it didn't change anything for me in terms of our relationship so for me it was a very like tricky time and of course I was very it, it felt like shit lah of course because you're like huh but y'all know me wah y'all know my yeah. intentions wah yeah. y'all def we worked together so many times to the point where you know for sure why I did this and we have our own like personal relationship ready with like the clients because mm. we work so well together so I felt a bit like so y'all don't really get me lah. Y'all don't really know. Yeah but, yeah, but I told a lot of people like after the incident, I value everyone that reached out to me way more. Because if you still choose to work with me after August last year, <laughs> this means you know what Pretty Please stands for. You know what I'm about. You know my intentions behind that video at least. Or you, you trust that I did it for the right intentions and you're, you're more than happy to still work with me. You know, you're more than happy to have me associated with your brand because you, you know why I did what I did lah. Yeah, so, so for me, it was also like a learning moment of like, Okay, long I'll just form new relationships. I'll just stick to the people who stuck with me throughout a tough time. You know, I'll just mm. I'll just keep prioritizing these people. <clears throat> if I can uh, work with them better, work with them on more more things. If I can give them more in our in our working relationship, do more for the brand, I'll do it because y'all stuck with me. Yeah. So for me, it was definitely a learning moment, and I think that was also I guess my first experience with cancel culture. The first time like I was literally like on a national scale trying to get cancelled. <laughs> it was very scary, oh, yeah. but yeah. I never thought of it. I'm not gonna be a loser and blame it on cancel culture like how everybody does now. I'm just realistic lah. Like, you know, you you saw a video like that, you didn't know how to feel about it. You assumed it's racist. You just wanna like 
stop following me like mm. you know that that's the reality of it i mm. wouldn't say i wouldn't say everyone tried to cancel me if anything the mm. government tried to cancel me more than other people <laughs> you know i'm not gonna blame other influencers yeah. like yeah. yeah so so yeah it's very unpredictable but it, it's a lot that can come out of it lah, for sure mm. okay so our second question is from I can't pronounce the username, <laughs> man. I'm so sorry. It's like it's literally no vowels. Yeah, there are no vowels in okay, it. Nice. It just sounds like girl. Okay, anyway. Nice. So Got it. thank you, girl, for, for your question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the second question is, um, and I think it's quite a heavy question. What if my parents, so they're 50 plus years old. Okay. What if my parents are jobless? They don't have any CPF, no insurance, and I'm still in uni. What do I do? Wow. Wow. I, it's a lot. My heart just sank, <laughs> man. I think yeah. I think it's very like there's no like formula or like no right answer here of what you should do but of course to be very practical and realistic i think like of course that like if you can manage it i think of course like getting part-time jobs and stuff would be a very like a sensible move because it it could help you and tide you through you and your family through like any unpredictable mm. or any tough times that are going to come out from the family situation you know so yeah. i think if you can manage it doing that would be great or like Finding something you love, like even like maybe giving tuition to like younger kids, you know, Honestly, something that's yeah. manageable and yeah. something that you can afford to maybe just spend like two, three hours on a weekend doing, not like a full time commitment or anything like that. So I think finding something that's manageable for your schedule, that there will be a great, like a great plus for yourself to just have some savings and backup in case. But I think, of course, with a situation like that, you, you need to realistically think about like what you're going to do after uni. You need to actually like, you know, look at. Am I gonna start working on the spot? And unfortunately, you might not have the luxury of like, you know, go getting your masters or something like that. You, uh, you yeah, have to think about like true. actually working. Yeah. So you know, maybe start like working on stuff like resume, all these things already, and like having kind of like putting one foot out there already, like and sussing out the 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 industry, I guess, because especially this year. <laughs> Hiring and like getting a job is so it's a tough nightmare. Already. It's a nightmare for fresh yeah. grads, especially because exactly. you're competing with everyone, not just yeah. other fresh grads. Yeah, 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 it's insane. So, I think really like doing what you can now would be great. But of course, if it's too much for you to handle, I think it's a matter of focusing on uni. Once you're done with school, then having to like, okay, full full fledged like, okay, I'm gonna get a job because I need I need to take care of my family. Yeah. Mm. So unfortunately, the reality is such like you know to the having to work to take care of everyone, but it's also taking care of yourself because. Yeah. The last thing you want is for something to happen to like family members and not be able to provide and not be able to do anything, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, if you're talking about no CPF and no savings and stuff like that, working is really the most viable like, Honestly, option. Honestly, yeah. 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 Definitely it's overwhelming, but for sure. yeah, just take it one step at a time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the next question comes from <laughs> Sarah Bet. Just call okay, her Sarah. Okay. Sarah. Okay. Sarah. Sarah, whoever you are, Sarah, you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> you asked... What did you do with your first big paycheck? Wow. Oh. Well, I can't remember eh, my first <laughs> big paycheck. She got too many big paychecks. Uh, you know, first <laughs> one was like 2017. <laughs> 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 okay, honestly, honestly, very, very boring answer, but I probably saved everything. Like, that's why I, I, I just do that a lot. And it's a very, very, very good habit. Mm. And it's a very, like, it's very lame, la, but it's true. It's really a very good habit to have to, like, to like be excited to see money in your bank account and just put yes. it all in, you know? Yes. So I've never been someone that's like, oh my God, okay, I've always wanted this thing and it costs this much, maybe I can afford it now. I've never done that. So it's just a foreign concept to do that. But I mean, in my career, in the last like two, three years, I've definitely splurged on making my own life easier. I've splurged on things like getting an iMac, you know, like getting stuff that makes the content creation, makes my life, my mm. job just easier and more enjoyable because, you know, it's the stupid things like I'm not going to sit here on my laptop that I've had since 2012 in Poly. You know, I'm not going to sit here worrying about whether this video can export. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's things like that. So it's it's very practical splurges, you know, it's things where, okay, I've, I've enough I've, I can afford to spend like $2,000 on an iMac, you know, it's, which is a very, very huge investment. Spending yeah. 2K is a lot, but getting the iMac was a great move and I got it like, my brother got it for me for, for my birthday last year, so he got me like a $1,000 gift card and then I top up the rest and I'm like, this is great. So, so <laughs> it was like best birthday gift, you know, so it was, it was yeah. really like amazing to, to do these things. La. And recently I bought a Wacom thing so now I can oh. draw, I can like, I can like actually write fun stuff in my videos now. So I, I like, for me, the content creation is a lot of fun. So if I can do anything that makes this more efficient or easier, it's it's a very weird geeky thing, but it's just mm. very fun. La. It's very like, my only other splurges in my life are literally clothes every few months. Right. But it's a it's also a very like, 
maybe every six months I will buy something on ASOS. <laughs> you know, every six months I'll be like, okay, let's go see if they got sale. Then I go and buy. So, so that's the only other like treat myself things I have. But other than that, it's it's like how I live my life. Or like sometimes I'll be like, okay lah, we just finished. Like we just had a very long day. Let's go eat a nice meal. Like let's go let's go for drinks on a Friday night. So that's the only other like. Splurges I, right. I would do la. Wow yeah. Can I just say Pretty, You are like Perfect for the simple sum <laughs> yeah, This is like You right? are like The person we If the simple sum Were a person I am a simple yeah. sum you, yeah. you are the simple sum <laughs> <laughs> 2 plus 2 is 4 <laughs> That's me Whoa That rap <laughs> That rap Oh my god Expect a new single Please <laughs> Like my our editor, uh, well, our content <laughs> manager Duan, yeah. we've all heard him. Yeah. He looks at me at dis- with disappointed, with disappointment every time I mention that I buy something. Yeah, he <laughs> would like, love you. <laughs> yeah, he would like, love you. Like hit me up. I'm kidding. No. I mean, I mean, <laughs> like uh, full yeah. disclosure. If like this content creation thing doesn't work out, <laughs> just like yeah. what, just reach out to the simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've uh, uh, already uh, spent this like almost an hour mm-hmm. together. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Your pupils have dilated. So this we is trust. my backup. Just now you asked if I had backup, <gasps> right? Yes, this is yes. it, guys. There it is. I just found okay. the answer to the question. <laughs> Yeah, you have our email, you have our numbers. Got so. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Alright, so the next question uh, from Hui. Okay, hi. So, um, they asked, what, inf- <laughs> what investment... Okay, you know, I'm just going to paraphrase. Do you invest and what do you invest in? Uh, myself. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> <laughs> no, la, but I yes. mean, I... Mean, I I guess recently, like the only investment that I've taken on myself is stuff like, um, like going for spin classes because it's the only form of cardio I would ever do in my life. Health, Honestly, same. Health it's the only is wealth. And for a long time, I it's not something I ever thought about or cared about, of course. Right. And I mean, even being able to like like things like getting insurance, things about taking care of your health, these are all luxuries. You need mm. to have some basic stuff settled first before you can think about these things. So for me, it's like, I, I know like in my life, I've, I used to be very active when I was in secondary school. I used to play basketball all the time. So of course, with life getting in the way and stuff, I just never thought about health or fitness and all these things. And, and I mean, realistically, I love how I look and I embrace like a lot. Of, and I'm very, very positive about my body and stuff like that. But realistically, I do have like health concerns. You know, realistically, I have, I have like this thing called PCOS. PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome. Ah, right. Yeah, it's a thing that like yeah. overweight people always get. Yeah. So it's like, and I have friends who like, I have heard stories like, you know, they have it and then it, it causes things like infertility in the future. So like, they have it and then they lost weight and then it gets better and you know, it's gone. So I'm like, yeah, you know, technically if it's a solution that's straightforward, then I do want to like try to be regular when it comes to taking care of my health and stuff. So, mm. so I'm trying to like every week go for spin classes, which it's, it's a huge step. You know, when you do nothing, <laughs> trying to do something weekly <laughs> is a huge step. So for me, it's like, that, that's what I've been investing I guess when I say invest in myself, that's what I've been doing. Like, you know, go get a package, you know, and then yeah. actually go like figure this out and try and find time every week to do something that I actually enjoy. Yeah, but other like than self-care. that, like... Yeah, mm. self-care is, is really so therapeutic and, and if y'all ever can, like that's what you should splurge on, you know, take care of yourself. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, like I do have a financial consultant that I talk to every time like any finan- anything about finances happen in my life, I always reach out, I always talk to her and I did have another financial consultant before her actually who talked to me about investments and mm. stuff like that. So I actually do have an investment, like I do have an investment. It's the kind of thing where like if I ever needed money, I could take it all out. Yeah, so it's just there growing on the side if it's growing, you know, if it's just <laughs> on its I mean You have to I believe. Mean, yeah, if it's I mean of course the growth is very like it takes a long time, you need to yeah. leave this in for years. So I think I've had it in for like a year and a half. So obviously it's still a very short time, it's still very fresh, but it's something that hopefully I would not need to touch and I can just mm. leave there for a very long time and when I ever do need it in the future, that's something I can I can fall back on la. Yeah, so wow. that's interesting because I obviously don't know about it, but you need people to like people who know about these things to tell you what to buy or what to invest in. Yeah. So so of course I think getting a financial consultant is was one of the best things I, yeah. I've done la, for, yeah. for sure. Yeah. My God, the fact that you've been investing longer than we have. <laughs> yeah. I started. You know when I started, <laughs> pretty. I started in August this year. <laughs> At least you started. <laughs> you right? know what? You're yeah. right. But <laughs> <laughs> I think I started like a month. No. Yeah, yeah. Very, very like close. Like a little bit after yes. you. Yeah. But so. yes, uh, you know, yeah. I'm very proud that I started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but when obviously when in the moment of making the decision, I'm like, huh, but why would I want to put like a, a fraction of my yeah, money yeah, yeah, here? Yeah, like, yeah. this yeah. looks better in my bank account. Yeah, <laughs> you know, oh, I can't, yeah, for I sure. I can see this. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. So it's, it's, it's a very, very intense decision, of course. But I was just like, um, I'm just going to tr- like have trust in this and I'm just going to do this because 
it's something that I also would like to ideally not touch and not have to hear or see about unless I really, really need it in the future. Future Pretty would be like, thanks. Yeah, Future Pretty <laughs> will listen to this and be like, wow, she's smart. <laughs> no, no, no. Bad, bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, but just as a side question, do you mm. know what uh, your funds are invested into? Like, oh, do you know if it's like index funds or, or um, stocks? Honestly, I don't, I don't know a lot of these words that you just said. Oh, But well. I do have access to like, I do have access to like the, the, the funds, of course, and I can go see exactly which okay, stocks okay. they're in and all that. So I definitely have the, <laughs> like it's transparent as hell, you know, I can mm. go and see. Okay, okay, But do I know what a lot of these things mean? Mean? No, mm. but can I ask and figure it out? Yes, for sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you know what? Yeah, um, the the spot at the simple sum is still open to you, despite what you <laughs> yeah, just yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You despite can learn my lack of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> You can learn all these words on the spot mm. if you join right now. Got it. Got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, next question. It's from Hara Hoys. <laughs> so cute. Eh? <laughs> I don't know how. I'm sorry, but. I, I tried my best. You asked, how do you budget your pay and keep to it? I love you. <laughs> okay, first of all, I love you back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for throwing in the I love you. <laughs> okay, no, but I think, okay, so I'm definitely not the kind of person who would see like, okay, this month I earn how much and how much can I spend and stuff like that. I definitely don't do that, but that's something I, I have always thought about and thought about how like I should do it because I should know exactly what I'm earning each month and I should be able to average this out. But I've done it last year because last year was my first time I had to do taxes. So that was my first time that I had to like actually do this, break it all down, you know, see my entire income and expenditure and all these things. So last year, doing taxes for the first time obviously gave me a better sense of how much do I really earn on average each month and how much do I spend and what am I spending way too much on. <laughs> so I think yeah. that was like having to do your taxes is really eye-opening and made me realize that oh my god i really gotta keep every receipt i really gotta do everything this year you know so it prepped me for this year be like way better and i did start the year with like a notebook you know writing down like okay what did i spend on shoots you know how much did i spend on props how much did i spend on caps you know stuff like that so i have started that which is a huge move considering how like my life is an organized mess like <laughs> things are just everywhere so this year i really started with like have a book, I've already like write, wrote down like my finances for maybe the first three months of the year so I know exactly what I spent on so that's that's how like I guess I keep things in check but it's like my earnings are definitely very irregular like really like what I mentioned like the start of the year was a mess for sure it was very quiet and now things are picking up again and then I guess when you're a freelancer that it comes with a lot of pros and cons and one huge con is the fact that you never get paid on time and mm, another huge yes, con is yes. that you really don't have people to protect you in this yeah. industry in, in, when it comes to finances so I've had gigs where like um, literally I was in the midst of working on a gig and the company I found out from the news that the company was going through liquidation oh, and okay. I I will probably never get paid my next 50%. So it's things like that, you know, it's being a freelancer really sucks because of things like that. And when it's a big gig, when it's like web series gig, big yeah. gig, I'm like, this is money that will take care of my family for a long time. This is money that will take care of us for a couple of months for sure. So it, it just made me feel very like, you know, wh who do you go to things yeah. like this? When a company is already filed for liquidation, like they have nothing, you know, it, it's, it, it's very transparent. They really have yeah. nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. It's tricky lah So when it comes to Budgeting and stuff like that I'm not too strict on myself Because I definitely I, I don't have a habit of spending So I'm not too strict about it But I know like Sometimes you know when If clubs were open right now You know I probably would be Telling you a very different thing Because I splurge a lot When I go out with my friends You know mm. on Friday nights I'll be like Okay lah let's just drink <laughs> You know I'll, I'll do that So <laughs> fortunately for me The one big great the, the, Actually one of the only Silver linings that came out of this Was that I, I obviously Saved a lot of money this year yeah. Because when you go on Friday, Saturday nights, you know, you drink at a friend's home. It's quite chill now, you yeah. know, you hang out at home. Yeah. So that's about it. La. So I definitely saved a lot of money this year, of course. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, so the next question is from not your baddie bae. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Well, wow. What are you if you're not my baddie bae? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> yeah. What the heck? Okay, um, so uh, not your baddie bae <laughs> asks, would you recommend... Investing in yourself if there's a risk of losing a large sum of money. Um, mm. how, do, how do we interpret this question? Uh, okay, so how I interpret it is, um, like for example, so you did talk in, a, uh, in one of our earlier episodes about taking a year to freelance and mm -hmm, like really mm -hmm. find out what you want to mm. do. Right. But at the same time, while freelancing, you're obviously losing a huge like, opportunity cost. Yeah. That oh, you, like okay. the amount of money that you could have earned if you mm. like continued working in your yeah. old job. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I guess, okay. I guess I did like briefly talk about this just now because 
essentially me investing in myself was me leaving my full-time job because mm. that was a massive risk and and it was I, I forgot how much I was earning but it was my first job so it definitely wasn't a lot but it was my only form of financial stability it was my only form of mm. consistency in my life at that point of time and it was it was the kind of money that I knew could take care of like all the bills at home I knew was enough to contribute to rent also and still and still have some form of savings and whether it was just a couple of hundred dollars it was still savings so I think like dropping that level of financial stability at a time where like I was the main person working at home was the was probably the biggest investment I, I made in myself actually but like I said like you know it goes back to the support system thing like I was really fortunate to have uh, family members that told me you know if, if you fail you fail like if you fail it's okay you know we're still here the situation it was will probably not be great but like if you are comfortable getting another job or working somewhere else, as long as long as you have no shame in doing what in, in making that investment in yourself, I feel. Mm. Because if you're gonna make that investment and have and and not just full on embrace it and hundred percent like take whatever that's gonna come with it and you're gonna just go into it with a lot of doubt and feeling like, oh no, you know, should I even be doing this? If you're just gonna mm. keep having self doubt, then it will just make it like it just make the whole experience worse. Like yeah. even if it fails, you're gonna you're not gonna be motivated enough to try yeah. something else or yeah. do something else or just get another job that you know could be a backup. You know, so I think really like if it's an investment like that, for sure like assess the situation. Like I learned this in school, but do a cost benefit analysis. Wow. You know, wow. which is essentially just weighing out all the pros, weighing out all the cons, and seeing whether it's worth it. Like if there are way more cons, like double the amount of pros, then maybe not. But if your pros really outweigh the cons, then I think it's worth taking the risk, lor. Yeah, so it's really very you need to sit down and talk about this and and sleep it sleep on it for for a couple of days for sure mm. before you make a big decision like that lah. Wow, that's super <laughs> useful advice. Yeah. I think you can apply be applied to so many things in life. You know, mm. like wh- what school you wanna go to, whether yeah. you wanna PTO now, or whether, whether you, you just wanna buy something. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah. 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 everyday so things, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And we will end off with the juiciest question. <laughs> Ooh. By, oh my gosh! I thought your name was Jamin, but it's Jaimin. I think Jamin. Jamin. J I mean. So, <laughs> what is your best and worst spending decision so far? Wow, this is a damn good question because I never like sat down and looked back at my life and thought about it like that. Time mm, to reflect. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I I really don't know what the worst one is because. I'm trying to think and I feel like it's probably some stupid thing you just randomly buy but it's never it's, I wouldn't say it's a bad spending decision because maybe we're talking about a couple of dollars mm. if it's something stupid or like random and, and <laughs> weird I wouldn't spend hundreds of dollars on something like that Right. so so I think I've never made a big like spending mistake I, I really yeah I really can't think of one maybe there's one that like I need to go back home and like, ask my brother and then he will tell me, you know? It's the kind of way all your family members will remember but you don't remember because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. they hate you for it, you know? Ooh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but I really don't think that there was anything I spent on that made my made everyone around me be like, pretty, are you kidding me? Do you, do you really just do this? Like, I'm quite practical uh, and rational and I would take, it takes me a lot to like spend a big amount of money like that. Like, even if it's for myself, even buying that iMac I mentioned, like, I was sitting there weighing it out even though I'm like, this is going to make my life way easier. Yeah, so so I I think it takes me a lot to like spend that money, so I don't really make very bad decisions. Maybe buy stupid cheap things that are like pointless. That's about it. But my best <laughs> spending decision is gonna sound very weird, but my best uh, investment I guess was um, to get an intern. So my best spending decision is Wisan. <laughs> so <laughs> so no, I, I'm not kidding. But really, like it was it was such a I, I never in my life thought I would need extra help and I always thought like no I was able to do this on my own what yeah. but it was life changing like really just working with someone who who gets you and like really makes your your life just so much easier it's insane like to me that was the I can't believe I sat there thinking about how is it really going to be worth it you know can yeah. I really afford to put a fraction of money here mm. to hire someone and I and I waited out like crazy that was that was, it took me a long time to make that decision but uh, it was it made it easier because Wisan was already a friend. You know, it made it right. easier because like I knew I knew what he was like. You know, it, I didn't have to like learn about someone completely brand new and teach right. them everything yeah. they didn't already know yeah. about the industry or about me. And it was it just made it very very easy. So it was definitely the best spending decision in my career, I guess, because <laughs> uh, it Wisan has been the most helpful thing <laughs> in my whole career. You know. Yeah. 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 So for sure, for sure, I think that was the best. Yeah. Like. I cannot explain. I cannot like now when I look back, I'm like, how did I do this on my own? <laughs> like, how did I manage the things that I manage on my own, and how did I navigate this space really without having like a person, you know, like a person there for me, like having my back. And and when you talk about 
I mean, but even though his title is intern, like Wisan is really not an intern. Wisan is essentially like agent, manager, <laughs> personal <laughs> assistant, intern. Yeah. Like he's every he's really my person. So it's like when it came to like even like having my back at things like a shoot, you know, like you you had a shoot and you're just the talent. Sometimes mm. you get told what to do, and sometimes there are things that like t- totally go against me, my what I stand for and what I don't want to do. And Wisan would have those very difficult conversations, like like my manager. You know, he would step yeah. up and be like, "Oh no, no, actually, this is what we agree on. We're gonna wow. stick to this." And and it's 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 so interesting because I'm like I didn't know that I needed someone to. Sometimes you really cannot say the things that you need to say. Yeah. And in the mm. industry that you're in, it's like because you are the talent, you are the scriptwriter, you are the editor, you are everything. It it cannot come from you. Yeah. Because and it's very difficult to talk about money mm. when you are also the creative and you're also the person hosting this and you're on camera. But it's also very difficult to negotiate and talk mm. about money, even though like. Like yeah, like something's really just cannot come from you. It needs to come from your teammate. It needs to come from your colleague. It needs to come from someone who handles this side of things. Yeah. Mm. So so I think like having, uh, like hi- after after I hired Risa, I was like, oh my god, yeah. Like something's really shouldn't come from me. I shouldn't be here negotiating money. I shouldn't be here uh, talking about budgets and rates. You know, I should really just focus on the creative aspect of everything. And if somebody can help me handle all these things and clients and admin stuff, then it takes a massive like weight off my shoulders, lah. Yeah. It definitely did a lot for my mental health, for sure. Oh, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah, yeah. So I really, Gosh. when I say like Wisan is my best investment, it sounds very transactional and weird, but it's <laughs> it's true. Like in terms of every aspect of my life, he has made better la. <laughs> As much as I bully him and talk so much <laughs> nonsense, yeah, yeah. It's essentially I paid to have a younger brother that lives oh, with so me cool. for no reason. <laughs> I paid for a brother, <laughs> <and> a <while laughs> even though I have a brother. <laughs> So sad. Oh, no, 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 real brother here. This is like. <laughs> <laughs> well, my bro, my real brother has a real job, so he can't be my in. <laughs> no la, but, but yeah, yeah. I think I think really, really best investment in myself and also in like my career for sure. Yeah. Wow. I was about to give you shit for like not giving me a worse decision or a worse spending decision. Really don't know but then, but then you know what? I feel so. Touched and heartwarmed by that. <laughs> that I'm gonna give it a pass. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a pass. Yeah, wow. I mean, wait, let me ask Wisan. Wisan, do you know if I spend my money on anything useless? What's the dumbest thing I spend my money on? Dumbest. Yeah, don't have, right? Yeah, see, he said I frugal. Oh my god, <laughs> pretty you're hired. We don't have, and Wisan <laughs> is with me almost every day, so Aww. he would know if okay, I waste then, my money on then I lost it. Right? It was like a forty dollar <laughs> fan. Eh. Oh my god! Okay, okay, wait, wait. <laughs> no, no. Ada, <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with you? <laughs> no, but <laughs> no. The fan <laughs> said something really cool. It said like, yeah, "Yes, bitch." And I wore. I, I so I whipped out the fan for the performance at Pink Dot, and it was so cool. I had an entrance with this really massive fan, and then. And then like after the, the pink dot like the light up everything I left it on the stage and then it was raining. <laughs> then I ran ran off. I was like, where's my fan? I think somebody and I'm like it's I think pink somebody dot. saw you think it. People are not gonna steal my yes bitch yeah. fan. <laughs> oh yeah, so God. that was but it was very worth it. It was from a very like prominent like brand. I think it was called Daft Daft Boy or something like that. It was oh. a yeah, it's a famous like fan brand. <laughs> I was oh, like, man, man, I got a cool fan and I lost uh, it. Oh I would have loved yeah. to have that too. Yeah, yeah see I, I think yeah. about the br- like a pink like electronic fan. No, it was when like you say it was a like, <laughs> like yes, bitch. It was very dramatic. It was very yeah. big, is it? Yeah, it was a very big like fan. It wasn't oh. those like normal small ones. <laughs> big oh, man. Like, the kind where you open and there's a massive sound. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. I would I would drop forty dollars on that. See, fan as well. I, and I got it during the Pink Fest. It was a, it was a fundraiser thing. So of course I'm gonna spend money uh, at, okay. for yeah. a good cause. You know, true, for, true. for for like local brands and stuff. Yeah. Okay, like, yeah. It wasn't See? a stupid decision. Ah, we It wasn't a stupid decision if you didn't lose it. Yeah, I know. I yeah. <laughs> a lot was going on on Pink Dot Day, man. I forgot about the fan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. But I will keep, I'll keep buying stuff like that that make me very happy in the moment. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely keep doing that. But of course, when it's reasonably priced, lah, mm-hmm. like you see 40 still, I would say, okay, if you're telling me it's a $100 fan, then a bit... Pretty why you do this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you just like size, yeah. take salt wallet. <laughs> I suppose I must. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I guess that's about it. We've we've been sitting here for like an hour and a half, mm-hmm. but very wonderful hour and a half. So uh, thanks, Pretty, for coming down to like join us on this 
little podcast <laughs> that the disciple son has. <laughs> Thanks for having me. This, this was very like fun to talk about. I, I never had to think about all these things in one sitting, of course. Oh well. So it was a lot of fun <laughs> to like have to think back about like how I spend my money and how my thought process, I guess, behind these things because. They're not things I think about every day, lah, of course. Mm. Yeah, so thanks for helping me remember that I need to budget my money properly. <laughs> I mean, I feel like y- you've got it under control. <laughs> I feel like you reminded me oh, to yeah, budget honestly, my money properly. Like, then you're welcome. No. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> this was a very yeah. good uh, job interview, by the way. So <laughs> yes. you, you'll start on Monday, next Monday? Yeah, okay, yeah, can yeah, hire, hire, hire. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Um, yeah, so I guess... For, for the last time... Um, perfect guy with a perfect horoscope <laughs> sign. You know, you, we, you've heard her story. Mm. You've fallen in love with her oh, already. Oh, have you? <laughs> so I think I have a little bit. Oh, just a little slide bit. into her DMs. That's all you have to do. And Correct. be nice. Mm. Don't send unsolicited. Yeah, do. Photos. Don't be gross. Yeah, don't be gross. Don't be gross. <laughs> don't, come on. Don't be gross. That's yeah. an immediate block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're done. That's a wrap on another episode of Keep It Simple. Leave us a review on any of our platforms and remember to subscribe to us for more episodes. So stay tuned and see you next time. Until then, keep keep it simple. simple!